and well welcome welcome to session six and um so um and chris i'm, I'm sorry that you have the flu um and aaron you too i i guess there's something going around because i got a, a few notes today from different people that um that different people were homesick and um really and we're going to be able to make it and um sorry but uh for those of you who are here um this is as session six this is a chance for you all to have taken the material that i've geared towards adults and adapt it so that it could be used either within your schools as professional development you know for for teachers or with kids and um you know and what you've done is has, has been incredible so um i i guess who would like to go first and denise i can okay great <laughs> okay okay hold on yeah let me go ahead and get my uh slide open and then i will uh share a screen great okay everybody should see the slide that says mindful eating for middle and high schoolers yes okay so um and this really could apply to anyone um most of you already know that uh, overeating is a pretty big issue. I happen to live in uh, Tennessee and Louisiana, happen to be the heaviest uh, states in the union where there's only over 80% obese. So this is a pretty significant issue. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm just going to apply it to this. So slide one, and you could easily adapt it for any level. Mindful eating for middle school and high schoolers, nourish your body and mind. So issues of overeating, and of course, you would want to do this in the most loving, kind way, because we already know this is, this. you know, kids don't like to be this, but, you know, the parents are training them, and yeah, anyway, you guys all get that. So I've applied the pictures to the words, feeling badly about yourself, we can, yep, needing to stay healthy so you can avoid diabetes, cancer, heart issues, et cetera, probably going into more detail like that and just letting the kids talk because they will come up with the stories of how, you know, family members have, you know, you always hear about the diabetic who had to get their leg cut off or they have kidney failure. Mood swings also, and teenagers are already going through tremendous mood swings. So once again, letting kids talk about the mood swings and just kind of let them feed off of each other because they're going to see that man, uh, uh, just a huge group are all feeling the same way, which I think will really uh, bring the kids together also. Teasing, and of course, hopefully the bullies in the class feel a little guilty about that because there's always a couple in there, you know, bringing in a bit of peer pressure. And the mm -hmm. peers being kind and considerate and listen to yourself. And I'm hoping when they're actually doing all of this, they will see that we're all of this are in together and support each other. And then of course, help each other instead of hurt each other as we move along in life. And then talk about how this really applies to everything. So um, just a few tricks, and I actually plan on taking the kids through this. Breathe before you eat. Take a few deep breaths to connect to how you feel. Take a breath and just go through that. Feel it going through. And of course, Mitchell, this is right up your alley. Mm. Feel the air go up your nose. You hold it for a while, count to four, um, and then let it out. And then I've also, you know, strategies, drinking a big glass of water before you begin eating. And of course, this applies to all adults uh, also. So feeling you're awesome, a guide to mindful munching, and just going through the different mindful munchings, inhaling your lunch between classes, you know, do you guys feel like you get a tummy ache after that? Talking about some of the issues off that. Learn tricks for slowing down and savoring your food. 24. <laughs> mm. I actually, I actually employ that. Um, I have a really small stomach though. So I actually, you know, I take a bite and I do 24 chews before I swallow. Uh, mm. Just kind of going over tricks with that. So you digest food better. Uh, discover the art of mindful munching, of course. Of course, making little plays off of that. Enjoy your meals and appreciate every bite. So when you're at your meal, you're really taking a bite and you're tasting it and you're, you know, having all your senses involved. 
mindful munching is like giving your body a high five. And I want, I want to have all the kids turn to each other, give each other high mm-hmm. fives. Then going in further, what is mindful munching? It's being a food detective using all your senses and really, and I guarantee you kids, kids do not think about this. Use this sight, look at it, smell it, taste it, touch it to figure out what your food is all about, the look of it, uh, listening to your body, noticing when you're hungry and when your tummy just says enough, because it's pretty easy to take that bag of potato chips and sit down and eat the whole thing. Uh, and it's about giving food the attention it deserves, you know, instead of sitting in front of the TV, which we already know is death to a diet. Uh, that might be a good uh, slogan right there, death to a diet. Being mindful about food choices, equal positive body image also with health and well-being. Just going over being mindful helps us focus on amazing things our bodies can do. Gives it, you know, and going in, to, you know, running the sports people. Um, And everybody helping each other to think about other things and just sitting in front of the TV, going out for a walk, bike ride, you know, everybody is different. Uh, How do you uh, control your weight by different doing things? And some people, um, you know, and there's a lot of research on this, you know, the fat cells have actually changed over time based on what we're eating. And there are just going to be people who are just naturally more overweight. They can eat a lot less. Um, starting younger always helps, but it's also just being mindful and kind, no matter where you are with your weight. Mindful munching versus food FOMO. Of course, you got to come up with a good acronym, fear of missing out. <laughs> that that should take off pretty quickly, the FOMO. Uh, savoring your food, listening to your body, gobbling down food to keep up with everyone else, not paying attention. Um, yeah, that was always a big issue in my high school. I was always way left behind and the elementary kids always came in behind the high schoolers and I would eat through high school, middle school and elementary school. Mm-hmm. I did feel a little conscious, self-conscious about that one though, but you know, it is what it is. Creating a munchtastic environment, find a calm spite, spot, no, no homework, no phone. Cause if you have something else, you're going to be paying attention to that and mindlessly eating taking a deep breath at home. I kind of just came up with some cool pictures to give the kids also times to interact and talk about their feelings because as you move along in anything, kids will have a tendency to talk more also because you'll see this is you know very similar. Uh, munching like your superpowers, sight, smell, taste, touch, going over all those different, bringing out actually different foods too. You know, take a look, munch them down, take a different look at, um, you know, the sight, smell, taste, because probably a lot of them have never actually smelled food. (laughs) Mm. Feeling blah. Sometimes we might use food to feel better when we're stressed down. So just letting all the kids talk about that, you know, but mindful munching can help us identify the feelings, talking about our feelings. How many of us eat to, you know, we're feeling crappy. Nothing like a McDonald's burger and, you know, a slushy to get you through your emotions. So talking about that also. Challenges and conquering them. Limited limited time, you know, you think, and have the kids come up with all the excuses, the reasons why it's um, so challenging or or conquering them and how to conquer it and let the kids talk about that also. And then just telling them, you know what, you can do it just one day at a time, one step at a time, be who you are and who are you meant to be. So that's mine. Wow. It's, you know, so, so as a person who um, both is somewhat overweight and, um, and eats really fast without thinking about it, um, I can really use all of that. Um and I imagine it's, you know, kids, um, you know, and it's so important for them. So the way you've integrated, you know, mindfulness um, into the activity of eating so that you're aware of what you're doing, I thought was 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 really incredible. Thank you. Thank you. I think all of us struggle with that to some degree. <laughs> yep. No, I... Um, so, so my first job, um, basically I showed up at the job and I was told by my boss, your job is to be customer service. When this phone rings, it's somebody with a problem. I have to go away for three days. Uh, we have nobody to relieve you. So eat lunch at the desk. So basically, and, and she really wasn't particularly, um, 
helpful anyhow, even after she came back. So, so basically my job was from eight 30 in the morning until five 30 at night. Um, and I got, you know, I basically had to eat between phone calls. And so I just learned to eat really, really fast and that's kind of carried through. So. Yeah. Um, Hopefully if we can start younger, I mean, I would right. love to see this, something like this employed in all the schools and younger grades and just kind of repeat it. Like English is repeated every single year, you mm -hmm. know, that there's a yeah. week at the start of the year, get kids thinking, yeah, trying to help turn some of this around and yeah. Um, so, um, any, any other comments, anybody else have a comment? Uh, I just thought it was really cool that way, the way you just incorporated. I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Blanca. It, I thought that it was executed very well, how there is the concept of sensitivity taken care of because, um, it is a topic that is quite sensitive and she did it in a way that it addresses not fat shaming anyone, but being proactively healthy. I and I thought that it was I, I just want to say that that's a hard, hard thing to tackle now that um, it right. was done effectively, professionally, and very tactful. Thank you. Uh yeah. So so and thank you for, for being brave and going first also. Uh, so you see, it's fun to present uh, the slides. And so I'm looking for, uh, so who else, um, who, uh, anybody else, who's next? I feel like that segues in pretty well, actually, into mine, um, if, if that's okay. I'd yeah, like that'd be great. Go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. And, and I have you listed as a co-host, so should be able to present or if you want me to present i'm happy to present also perfect i i think i'm sharing am i sharing my screen yeah yep. yep. perfect all right here we go all right let me get my notes on the other side okay um so i actually chose a, a bit of a different path um i as of like the last year got really into fitness and the gym and i noticed um it was affecting my mental state just about as much as as anything else could. And I found that really interesting. And so part of me taking the course actually was trying to connect the dots of there's got to be something here. Uh, you know, I've read about this a little bit before. How does this factor in to, to my workout or, or the way I just um, treat my body and, and in my life? So I kind of did a mindfulness in the gym, how training the body also trains the brain. Hmm. Um and so the first first slide is is that the mental actually directly impacts the physical. Um, we heard about this obviously early on is sympathetic and parasympathetic. Um, we see this in in the way of of if we're if we're riled up or we're in danger, we do that fight or flight. That's that sympathetic nervous system acting in, kicking in. Um, endorphins kick up, um, and the parasympathetic is all about that calming down. So we know that that. Let's say someone or something is scary or fearful. We know that that activates the body, right? Um, and this is just a little example of the things that are attached to the parasympathetic, how they react and how they react to the sympathetic. Um, we know that depression, anxiety, and stress can can uh, affect the physical, right? We know that oftentimes when people are depressed uh, or stressed out, that you know we go to those tendencies of maybe overeating, maybe we maybe we starve ourselves. It's said, right? Uh, lack of sleep. Um, those things, all these these mental processes directly affect our physical bodies as well. Um, and the last case, and I just want to include this because I do touch on it, is extreme cases, right? Like phantom limb syndrome. We know that that is a thing that, that can occur if those who don't know um, the idea that while you, maybe your limb is no longer uh, attached to you, your brain kind of fills in this strange gap of, oh, I still feel like it's there. Um, or or, or um, other cases like this where it's where it's there's asymptomatic symptoms or symptoms put upon you that maybe can't be explained but it's directly impacting your physical health um and so but and this is the big this is the big but transition is the physical also obviously affects the mental right 
body image is rampant in our culture. Um, not looking the way you want to look. Uh, Instagram with with people living their best lives, and and you're like, man, that that really affects your mental health as well. Uh, brain shape and structures. Um, oftentimes, or actually known things like schizophrenia. Um, directly changes the way your brain looks and is is changes the shape of it. And so we know that, yeah, those physical structures that in a common brain, uh, when it becomes abnormal, this affects your mental well-being um, and physical conditions. Um, I feel like a lot of times in, in our culture, we forget about how much it affects you to be, oh, I'm bound to a wheelchair for this amount of months. I'm missing out on my sporting, sporting event because of um, I, I hurt myself, things like this. So I also just wanted to bring those up too. And so my solution, it's a bit of a joke, but a solution. Bench press. That's not true. In all seriousness, um, I did, I, I went through a lot of um, research studies and I tried to find uh, some, some more concrete evidence of these connections. And so the ones I really found and, and um, wanted to talk about were uh, exercise can prevent negative forms of stress. There's a great study um, by these two, Childs and Wit, where they presented two groups with a stressful test and a non-stressful test that they determined. And it was shown that um, those who work out more had less negative forms of stress. They had a lower heart rate. Um, and they did not have those, like I said, higher cortisol levels than those who did not work out they had a higher heart rate, they had higher cortisol levels in the stressful test. So it looks like exercise can actually prevent negative forms of stress and help you manage it in those difficult situations. Um, it can also, I clicked a little early, but it can also increase in neuroplasticity. Um, the idea of changing and growing new synapses. Um, Have a good afternoon, guys. And it, and it promotes and produces white and gray matter as well. Um, a little study from uh, this individual as well. Um, the, another study I read about was uh, focusing on mindfulness and exercise can improve heart and parasympathetic activity, uh, affecting things like panic attacks and response rate. This was something I really looked forward to and wanted to touch on a lot because breathing in the gym is is really important, not only because you're getting oxygen into your to your muscles that are working, but also it. I've noticed a lot of times for myself, it centers you. It, it makes your, it calms your body down. It makes you focused and honed on the task at hand. Um, and so it looks like, based on the studies I read, it, it focuses, um, that, sorry, m mindfulness can can improve heart rate and parasympathetic activity so that when you're in stressful situations and when you're faced with um, difficult tasks like the, the first study, um, that you can actually have a better response rate and a better like time to react rather than just immediately kicking into fight or flight. Um, the last thing is that it was shown that you, you can even tweak and change the limbic system. Um, this last study by Sunba and Kami were, um, was focused on the idea of chronic pain uh, and specifically using exercise as a treatment method. Um, and it looked like those who went through that program, their functions began to normalize um, and they were able to change processes in the limbic system that I'm going to pull up the exact wording um, that changed. They, here we go. We show that exercise activates positive neurons in the nucleus uh, and it was promoting reward behavior um, and it got rid of this idea of fear conditioning um, in chronic pain patients, uh, fear avoidance thinking is what it got rid of, or fear memories. Hmm. So it's really interesting. Um, and it, like I said, it enables goal-directed behavior instead of this fear avoidance of, I can't do it. It changed it, changed it into, well, maybe I can't. Or, or oh, look, I can. Look, I wonder how much more I can do. So I thought that was very interesting. I thought it really yeah. applied to mindfulness. Um, and I just figured I'd put in a final personal anecdote of my own journey with this i like i said i've noticed a lot of improvement in my mental and physical well-being at the gym um and and it also i feel like with exercise at the gym it increased my techniques for my own self-regulation of like i said those stressful moments uh breathing i i try to do 
similar things at the gym as I do in my teaching of, oh, I'm getting worked up. Oh, I'm having an off day. I feel a little unregulated. I, I try to do my breathing um, or I try to focus and go to that place. Um, it's changed the way I feel like I see my life. A lot of the times when it comes to what I just discussed, it, it changes that outlook. It changes a fear-based mindset in the limbic system to a more, well, perhaps I can. And I think that's a huge thing. So I just added a little bibliography. We're excited at the end. Um, mm. just, to, just to show. So um, that was my, that was my little presentation. So. I totally agree with you, John. Uh, I don't have, I, I'm a boss at a company, so I'm incredibly busy. So I don't have time to go to the gym, but we have a park. We live by a park. So I'm able to go out for a 45 minute to an hour. And it totally changes um, all the stress that I've been facing. I always try to do it in the middle of the day. Huge stress, gets rid of the stress, do all the deep breathing, get going. But uh, it is, it changes your brain, the neuroplasticity, so huge, really good points, really enjoyed it. Yeah, and have you, you haven't had a chance to try that yet with, say, sixth or seventh graders, right? I've been able to do it off and on. I, oh, yeah. a lot of times, uh, the example I was going to share was um, we had a very heavy assembly on just the Holocaust um, mm -hmm. a month ago and my kids got back and man, were they really, they were, you know, it was a lot. And so right. we actually went outside. I took my class outside, run around, throw a football or two. Mm -hmm. And then we came back and, and it made them more stabilize made them you know they got that energy going they were able to um breathe a bit and they yep. were able to recenter mm -hmm. i feel like a lot of them shut down because it was an attack almost of their senses so mm -hmm. yeah yeah and mike i i my guess is if we go if you go through these slides with sixth or seventh graders it really gets them you know to really think about how they can use exercise with their behavior and especially if you then support you know support these slides during during the course of the year you remember when we did so and so you remember when we talked about so and so my guess is that, that will have a really um salutary effect on the kids it, it's really good yeah um and my guess is everybody here learned something also about all the, the different effects of, of of exercises on on the brain. We don't think of it, and and yet, look look what we do is we you know we 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 say to the the kids, okay, we're not going to do recess. We're going to do more test prep. You know, like no, they need they need to get out and and do stuff. You know, we have to get those um, happy hormones in. Any other comments? Great work, John. Thank you. Okay. Who's next? I'd like to go next. Okay. Great, Asha. Okay. I, ju I, I just came. <laughs> okay. Did, um, let's see. I have to find you here so I can make you a co-host. Um, there you go. Okay. So I just so, share my screen. It's been a while, and I'm not oh. in the best of health, so... Anyway, uh, well, it, I mean, if you want, I I can share it, and you can just oh, okay, oh, no, then. you got it, you got oh, it. Oh, oh, Actually, okay. it's perfect. <laughs> you do it. Okay, I I picked. So, so I just talk about it. Is that I just came? Yeah, just talk about you know what um you you can go through each slide with you know that that's great, and just say how you would teach it. You oh. know what what the purpose of that slide is in terms of teaching kids. So okay. I picked empathy, which is one of the five powers of Sagemen. And I teach primary, I teach second grade, and I put the learning target because empathy is something that they really have to learn at a from a primary level. And so I put the learning target and the success criteria. Uh, that is something our school district requires us to do always. So I thought I'll include it over here. Um, then I put the materials that we need, uh, that we need, I, of course, the internet access and the, the book a journal and the song. So the lesson that I put, I started from day one, and this is something that you can continue throughout the week. Although I just put day one, you can do this for two days. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is first introducing the word empathy, what it means, and then uh, 
sharing the poster, which is in the next slide, and define definition as to what empathy is, is about. And then the next slide is a poster. Uh, that is something uh, we do in class. Uh, we have a unit on empathy too. So I included that poster over here and I have put this poster up on the wall. So if kids tend to forget what empathy is, I'll direct them to this poster. And then this is the book that I selected, New Me and Empathy. I've read other books, but I, I haven't read, I've read it personally, but not, I haven't shared it with the classes yet. So I hope to share this book probably next week or within a few weeks. And then day two, again, going back and reviewing what, what the word means, vocabulary word, empathy, reviewing the poster. And this time I incorporated writing where they can share and write as to what empathy means and making connection. Then I put a video clip as to what empathy means. And this is a real, very uh, child-friendly, uh, age-appropriate video clip as to what empathy means. And then a journal prompt, I, I gave them a starter sentence. I showed empathy when, and this is something that I've already done in class. Uh, and it's really interesting how then kids who can't write, you know, I make them draw a picture. And then this is like a checklist at the end, how they have, this is what I learned this week. Where have you shown empathy? In the classroom, school bus, lunchroom, hallway, on the playground, at home. And, and then uh, this is how much more practice I need, a little bit, some, or a lot. And then this is what I learned this week. Again, the same thing. This is where I will practice next week. And then at the end is just dis discuss as, as to like walk in my shoes. What is walk in my shoe mean? What, why is it important to understand what other people feel? So it's just turn and talk, discussion. And this is this basically summarizes the lesson. And then at the very end, I put this uh, empathy song, which I've shared with my class. And I give credit to Second Step. It's from where I got. Wow. So it takes a few days, maybe a whole week or so, but I just broke it down quickly. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, uh, if you did do it, you, you, since you're doing it for multiple days, about how much time would you spend per day? Yes, you know, uh, probably. Although I put day one, it may take two days, and again, it depends on the class that I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, it may can take two days or more with one lesson. Mm -hmm. And it's since I teach second grade, you know, they're they're pretty young, seven and eight year old kids, and I have to go back and review it, and it's just not. Uh, just teach them. I want them to apply it, you know, right, outside right. recess time, outside in their home, you know, not just learn about it and write something. That's not my goal mm -hmm. overall. And then be empathetic to one another. Even as an adult, we need to learn that. So, wouldn't I, it be great if kids grew up and they and they were and they were empathetic as adults, right? Oh my goodness! They, you know, by the time they hit fourth grade, you know, you can see the transition. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. that would be nice. <laughs> No, as, as you were going through it, one of the, you know, there's just so many things from, you know, a teaching standpoint that I thought it, the way it was really, it was great the way you incorporated them. Um, using that uh, poster as an anchor so that you can always go back to, you know, yeah. is a way of, 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 you know, when, when behavior goes off or when people kind of forget the lesson, it's like, you always have that poster there. Um, using a book and a video um, and multiple okay. media um allowed you know different ways for the information to come in um having a uh review it at the kind of the beginning of each day of what they've already learned um and then building on that allows um you attach new knowledge to past knowledge um you have them create you know in a, in a, a few different ways and um you know you from bloom's taxonomy you know creation really is the highest form of learning and then you give them also over the course of the five days many different ways on reflecting because that's what um converts a lot of the knowledge um into uh habits that that form in, in the limbic system so there's just so many things that you that you did in that course which are really great um yeah. teaching strategies and I, and, and I continue practicing that you know throughout the school years just not like five days and that's it Throughout mm -hmm. the school year, we practice this throughout. And the poster is kept up on the wall till June, till school closes. Yeah. So it's more to refer to. 
Um, yeah, it was really, really great presentation. Um, other comments from, because feel free to, um, you know, comment. A Asha, thank you. You're welcome. You know, and one of the reasons why these are in the spreadsheet is for you all to be able to use each other's lessons. Um, and even as you see from the from the previous lessons, from the previous classes, you know, you can use the lessons that other teachers have, have used also and maybe, you know, adapt it and, and, and make it your own. So, um, okay. So thank you. That's, um, who wants to go next? Pretty I'll, cool, I'll right? go next if that's okay. Yeah, sure. And are you? I, um, uh, I, I'm not a presenter. Oh, do you want me to present? Or uh, okay, let me. I have to find you. Here. I can present. Okay. Um, oh, there you are. Okay, so are you? No, I didn't. Wow, I'm somehow or other it's not making you a co-host. I keep on clicking make co-host and it's not doing that. Maybe I have I should be that I have a maximum number of co-hosts here, right? Um you know, it might be. I don't yeah, know. that's the issue. <laughs> okay. You, you can stop making me a co-host and then you okay. can make her co host. All right. <laughs> No, it's still not, it's still not doing it. I, oh, wait, wait, it's, you know, something, it's, it's coming up on a different screen. I'm looking at one screen where I have the list of people and it's coming up on my other screen. So, okay. So Blanca, you're, you, you're, you should be a co-host, yeah. right? All right. And I just need to, oh, I don't want to report. Sorry. I want to share. I'm just looking for. It Where should be like green, green there? on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, I could find a break at reaction settings. Mm, I don't see. If you do Alt S, it. you will share screen. Alt S. Alt okay, S. Thank you. Oh shit! I do have a Mac. <laughs> oh. Um, but then it's probably hmm. Command S. Command yeah. S. Command S. Okay. And I don't know if I'm sharing my screen now, am I? Uh, no. no. Move your mouse down to the bottom no. left hand corner and then go to the right. And you'll see. Sure. Okay, so good looking up. No, I'm trying. It's, I only see the one that says. Okay, says so leave. you know something? I'll I'll share it from my screen and you can just tell me when to, when, when to move on to the next slide. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's. That actually works right here. Oops. Ah, sorry. Uh, I have to move this. Okay. So you see, everybody sees the screen, right? The story of prefrontal and limbic. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I am a Spanish teacher at the high school level, and all my students range from freshmen to a few seniors. With that said, uh, and it's still, they have some basic language and they are ready to be a little more advanced. But honestly, they're still at the elementary level in language arts in Spanish. Look, uh, teaching the things that we talk, that we learn about during course, I presented it at a very, um, at, a, at a, basically like a children's book. Interesting thing that happened uh, before I started working on the, on the project, I was brainstorming what to do, what to do, and I have to watch Kung Fu Panda. And watching Kung Fu Panda, I was, it hit me with the realization of, this is a brilliant film about everything that we have talked about. And so many moments in that film that reminded me of all the things that we've talked about. Mm. Uh, so uh, I started with introducing who are prefrontal and Olympic. And I will read it to the This will be presented in Spanish at a very elementary level so that my level two Spanish students can follow it. Um, 
So who are prefrontal and mimic? And some tells the story. This is a story of two roommates living and working together. And they are both assistant, which is in plain, in very plain, simple terms that I made him into a little character uh, that a writer doesn't have to write in and he's fast and he has no patience. Uh, he doesn't like to wait or take time and he only takes him a second to get mm. his job done, but he isn't always needed. And then I introduced Rick Brondahl, who came later because he would be speed refining himself and he by a fine pitch in the and I love this activity where you where you have the kids come into, into different groups. To, And then share them. Now, I um I can't hear you right now. Blanca, can you hear me? So so I'm, um since I can't hear Blanca, I'm gonna like I guess go through the slides and then um so I guess once once the students share, um then this would be a, a review of um you know uh what what they've discussed so far and limbic versus prefrontal um and then go through them that when they're in in prefrontal that these are the five powers of the prefrontal and probably then lead to a discussion on that and then um have the group have them um break into groups again and create a, a scenario Yes, very similar to what we did, but this is in a much more kid-friendly way um, of uh, how they would use the sage powers in those different scenarios and, um, you know, how they would uh, respond using prefrontal versus how they would respond in, in limbic and then present in the form of a skit um, and recorded in class. I think I, I, I think that that's brilliant. Uh, Blanca, are you back? Can we... Can we hear you? Um, hopefully you can hear me because I can't hear you at all. But I think the way <laughs> you've taken these concepts of prefrontal and limbic and put them into characters um, and then uh, kind of built a story around them, have the kids get together and um, and learn them, you know, discuss them from themselves was a kind of reflection and then come back to get... <laughs> and then everybody come back together again i th I, th I think that was brilliant and then have, and then once they have the basic knowledge to have them break into groups again to discuss using um you know using the five powers and um come up with situations and present uh skits and because it's bilingual i'm assuming that the skits uh will be in either you know english or spanish whichever they're story just writing a story like a kid's book about prefrontal and limbic in mm -hmm. really as elementary as possible so that they could follow it and then i mean there are high school students they will realize oh she's talking about the brain Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, like they will figure out. Oh, okay. That they, that they're smart enough to like realize. Oh, this is our brain stuff. Um. Yeah. So they they will know that that's what I'm talking about. And are you and going to also? Are you going to also have this in Spanish? 
Or are you going to explain it in English? I made it in English for, for the purposes of this of this class. It would have been a lot easier for me personally to put in Spanish because I... Oh, because I was going to offer to translate it for you, you know? I have a dictionary, so I could... No. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, if, um, if you don't mind, if you do it in Spanish also, if you can go back to the spreadsheet... And next to next to the URL, if you could put this URL of the Spanish version, I think that there are a number of Spanish teachers um, and and bilingual teachers. I think it would be great to have in both languages. It's absolutely. It, yeah. I love this. It, this mm -hmm. is very fun. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And other other comments. I loved your limbic limbic guy. <laughs> yeah. That was great. Yeah, the guy who's who's, who's so angry, <laughs> and and kind of teenage mutant ninja turtles like. Also. Okay, thank you. Um, so who would like to present, or have me present, and I can and talk about um, who who's next. I can go. Okay, Peggy. Great. Um, uh, sorry. You, that's okay. I'm, I'm on gonna... vacation. Okay. So can you present for me? Yes. Um, now I have just this find. Where, oh, there it is. Okay. And let me just see if I can get in here. Um, first, I want to make sure I can get it up on my screen. Okay. And oh, it, it, that just downloads the file. So I'm what I'm going to do. Oops, that's the wrong. That's the wrong one. Um, let me try it a different way. Okay. Um, now let me share the screen. Okay. Okay. So I did my presentation on. Um, uh, perhaps I can, but I changed it to I think I can for kindergartners. So this is what my lesson is geared toward, towards. So you can go ahead and change. Flip ahead. So um, I would talk about um, the I think I can attitude, you know, change the wording to something that they could relate to and talk um, my I would wrap the whole lesson around the book. Um, I think I can, the, the little engine that could, and talk about just like the little engine, he can accomplish difficult things. And to remember to keep saying, I think I can, I think I can, and keep trying. And that we, oh, oh that's the last slide. Oops, sorry. Did I, I, <laughs> are there, did it just go from one to last? Uh, you know, something, let me try a different way. Um, oh, no. There, okay, okay. okay. So this would be our welcome our all aboard. And it would be today we're going to climb aboard an imaginary train and our journey takes us to a land where toys need help getting all over the mountain. So all aboard. And then the next slide. So then I would um, have the the link in there for the little engine that could and I would have the kindergartners listen to the story or I, I would have it on hand too. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you, I would ask them, you know, what challenge did the little engine face? Uh, why did the un other engines refuse to help? And what did the little engine say to keep saying to itself? What, you know, what was that phrase that the engine kept saying to itself? And then I talk about how everyone has challenges. And since we're talking about the littler kids, like, Learning how to tie your shoes really hard, finishing a puzzle's really hard. And what, you know, then the next slide is like, what do you have? What is difficult for you? And so up on the whiteboard, we would list some things that are difficult for them. And then how does it make you feel? How does that not being able maybe to tie your shoe, how does that make you feel? What kind of emotions does that stir up inside of you? So we would, you know, like have a discussion and talk about that. Then um, that we all are superhero engines and that all you have to remember is just say, I knew I could, I knew I could, you know, keep saying that. 
And then we were, then we'll have incorporate in um, a hands-on activity. So we would make our own little train engines to overcome challenges. So there would be a train that they would color and then cut out. So they're gonna think of the challenge that they have faced, any kind of challenge, draw that challenge on a paper. So let's say they're having challenges jump roping. So they would draw themselves as jump roping. Then they would draw that out and attach their drawing to the engine and then the little engine that could. And then now you can say, now imagine yourself going over the mountain, puffing its way through saying, I think I can, I think I can. And when you get to the top, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could. So they each have their own tangible physical thing that they can do. And, and while they're coloring and cutting, you know, we can still have all those conversations while they're doing the activity as well. And um, then at the end, uh, I think I can attitude, you know, like I was saying, just like the little engine, we can all accomplish difficult things. Keep remember just saying, I think I can do it and keep trying, don't stop. And that we all have the power to overcome challenges, either big or small. So that is my presentation for the little kindergartners. That is so fun. And I, that, that happens to be one of my favorite stories. Anyhow. Mine too. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, uh, and the way you built in the book and the story, and uh, even if the kids haven't heard the story before, you know, hearing it, um, they can all identify with it and, um, and the engines that turn them down, um, and the challenge that the little engine faced and then, um, having them, uh, choose a challenge and then visualizing success at that challenge and then creating something based on their success kind of locked in that success. That was, mm -hmm. um, that, that was very in, in, inspired for you to do that. Um, and, yeah. and, and we'll be inspiring for the kids as well, I think. Yeah. Something fun and easy and for them to get their hands on and it. And this really gets that perhaps I can, that whole message wrapped into their brains. And then as they grow up, you know, as they go on, we can talk about it more and more. So, yeah. Well, and thanks for making an appearance on vacation. Where are you? I'm in San Diego. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah. <laughs> so. So, yes, enjoy. And uh, um, other comments from people? So I know a few of you also teach young kids. Um, and so you might be able to use this also. So, so thank you, Peggy. I, th I, it was, um, it, you know, you've, you've pulled together a lot of great teaching techniques. Um, the graphics are great. I love the story. Um, and I love way, the way the kids, you know, vision, you know, discuss problems and then visualize success and then create, Again, using, you know, Bloom's higher order uh, learning. So, Thank you. Yeah, great job. Okay. And you see, it's fun to present. So uh, who wants to present next? I can next before okay. my place gets busy. Okay. Um, do you, did I make you a... I haven't made you a um, code. Can I click on share content? There, it's, You should be able to share now. I just made you co-host. I just share my, my screen. And if you can't, I can, I can share it and you can just tell me when to advance. I'm just trying to figure out the fastest way to get to it. I had it open in Google, but I'm on an iPad, so. Oh, that's going to be more difficult. Um, so, you know something? Why don't I share? Okay. And you can just tell me when to advance the screen, okay? Okay. Okay. So everybody sees my screen, right? So. I was just thinking about what would be the most useful for me. And before I could really go into all of the other 
like the layers of the sage brain and those um, tools we learned, I was like, I felt like I needed to first just introduce them to the difference between the two brains. So this is kind of what I came up with. You can go to the next slide. Probably got could have gotten into more detail with like learning targets and that stuff, but I didn't make it that far. Um, so I started out with the idea of just because your brain thinks it doesn't, thinks it doesn't make it real and just the questions that and the statements that kids can make you can go to the next one and I kind of thought of breaking it into two different kinds of game controllers to make it really relatable to kids who a lot of them that's mm -hmm. what they go home and do after school and so I went back to like the ancient type controller like Atari versus something that was more modern to try to get them to see the difference between the two um so that was kind of the main idea i went with so then um i kind of defined the limbic brain and how you you can tell yourself negative statements um and then i went and defined the sage brain and how you can think of a lot of those positive statements that we um, were thinking about from the constructive dialogue. I love her um, smile. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, visuals mean a lot to kids. Yeah. Um, so then from there, I went into basically a version of the cookie jar to have them experiment in their own brain to see the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. um, you can move to the next. Yep. So then I had them and I teach art. So in my room, I let them draw, not just have to write in words, um, things that they were proud of. And I put some examples of my own. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, so I went to then the sage brain and trying to give examples of things that maybe they could do and see as successes. You can go to the next one. And then I turned it, twisted it into thinking about the challenge that they did to make it to be that success, which I think is like the critical point in the experiment. Mm -hmm. um, so that they feel like they're proving that it was a success. And then I gave some examples of what the limbic brain might say or might think of like just quitting or thinking it was easy, the easy responses that kids will give. Mm -hmm. You can go to the next one. Yep. Um, so then um, I just challenged them to, um, when they feel like they're encountering a problem to think back to um, what their sage brain had told them with their successes. And to continue, I said they could put it in their tubs and keep adding to it as when they finish other challenges to kind of keep it around um, to build that um, sense of what the sage brain is. So I think that was most of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so. so it's really it's really cool the way you've um, you built Limbic and Sage and the cookie jar and put these incredible graphics in and giving kids a chance to then reflect and, and talk over the, the, the different things that they've done. Um, mm -hmm. It's, you know, you've, you've, you've built in so many different elements and with the, you know, with your gift of <laughs> uh, being able to graphically design um, it's uh, it's very attractive for kids. It's, it's, yeah. Have you had a chance to try this yet? No, I just made it Sunday night. So, but I probably will use it. I mean, that's that was my goal was to make sure I had something I actually could. Uh huh. Use, so. So yeah. Um, my guess is yeah. Um, you know, great examples of uh things that kids could do, or that, or and and or that that you've done. And um, yeah, the, the the comments are in the in the chat. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, thinking getting kids to think about their own challenges. Um, yeah, I think this will be useful for a, for a lot of teachers. Sure. So yeah, thank you. Yep. 
Um, okay. Uh, any any other comments? Okay, who wants to go next? I'll go, but you're going to have to share my slides for me because I'm okay. on my phone and I have a PTO meeting going on in the background because I have ah. to be at both meetings. Ha. Okay, so now I have to find, oh, there, there it is. And techniques, and then let me share the screen. Okay, breathing techniques. So when I did this, um, I've never done a slide presentation before. So this was a whole new skill set for me. Um, usually, because I'm a para, I go into classrooms and the teachers give me lessons and I take that group of kids out and I work with them. Mm -hmm. So this was actually a really good growth for me to expand my, my own knowledge. So I base this off of yoga lessons that I've done and I've done with my girls and also with a lot of um, kindergarten, first grade kids, they suffer from a lot of anxiety. So helping them to slow down, regulate their breathing, talk through their problem and learn how to um, calm themselves down is really a good technique with them when they're really, really upset. So that's what I based this off of. Um, and then also at the end of the lesson, you'll see it connected with a book about mindfulness that I found on YouTube and I linked mm -hmm. with the lesson plan. So you can go to the next slide. Okay, that's really small. But anyways, um, basically a lot of it was about learning to center yourself. So finding a spot on the carpet, um, closing your eyes. Make it larger. That's is yeah, that better. Make it like, oh, that's perfect. Thank you. So find a spot on the floor and crisscross. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath and hold it for the count of three. And then having them go through the count of one, two, three. Let your head drop down to your chest and take another deep breath. One, two, three. Let your arms relax down and another deep breath. One, two, three. And helping them learn to be self-aware of their own inhale and exhale. Your chest should start to feel heavy as you slow down your breathing. In the host by now, they're, they're actually finding that center and bringing in a slow thought where your mind is calm and then slowly open your eyes. We do breathing techniques with the kids, but they're called brain breaks in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of visual of um, you're melting, relaxing your facial muscles. Your head is now on your chest. So that was where I got that idea. You can go to the next one. So, and then the flower breathing technique is actually something I've done on the playground with kids when they're in uh, fight or flight mode. Mm -hmm. It just helps them to take a take a minute, take a breath, because by then they're usually come to you crying because they're already so emotionally upset. So um, we have them hold up their hands and spread open their fingers. So it looks like a flower. And starting with, at um, one end with the other hand, uh, using your pointer finger and touch each finger, bringing your pointer finger up and down the sides of the finger as they inhale and exhale down to the webbing and slide back up. Inhale at the top of every finger and exhale as your pointer finger slides down your finger to the webbing. Repeat as necessary till the child calms down and is ready to talk about their feelings. Because by the time they're done with that, and sometimes you have to go through it twice with them, they're able to regulate their thoughts and tell you what's going on and why they were so upset. And then from there, we do Kelso's choices with them about how they can solve the problem themselves. Is it a small problem? Is it a big problem? Big problems, you need an adult, small problems, you can work it out yourself. Next slide, please. And then this was a really fun book to read, um, The Mindfulness Makes Me Stronger. And it talks about a little boy and he has having a lot of anxious thoughts and his dad puts him through the process of how to self-regulate and mindfulness and learning to self-manage his own thoughts. And when you're feeling overwhelmed with life, what can you do to help yourself? It's a really cute video. I watched it all the way through and was like, oh, this is cute. This is actually exactly what we were talking about, but it's geared towards kids. So I just thought it was really sweet. And that's it. So, um, so I'll tell you, if I were your principal, I would want you to take these slides exactly as you have them and present them to all the teachers. Oh, thank you. It is, it's really, I mean, this is really what 
every person who deals with, you know, even dealing with adults, but every person dealing with kids, it's like, this is what you need to do. You know, this is a way of going about getting the kids to center so that you could then move forward with them. I, I, uh, if I were you, I would take this to your principal <laughs> and I would say, <laughs> I'm willing to do this with the other teachers because um, I think this is going to be very valuable. Great, great work. Thank you. I appreciate it. Other comments? Yeah, I, I was going to voice similar thoughts of, um, I, I teach older kids and I think this would be even great for them. Like I, I thought it was finally, it, it's so good. Um, I mean, I feel like a lot of times the older kids need this as a reminder. And so you even breaking it down like that was really well done. So I, I just, I appreciate it too. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. That's sweet. And I'd never heard of flower breathing before. I love that idea. That's great. Well, well, thank you. And thank you for presenting it, Elena. And so we have probably time for, for two, maybe three more. So this is your chance. Who wants to go next? Uh, I can present mine. Um, but it's, I feel like it's a, uh, what, like a process in the making. What's that expression? Okay. Work in process. Um, I just, I, I, and I, and I did it for here. I can share my screen. I did it for, uh, middle school, but after, um, Elena's, mm -hmm. I'm almost thinking that it would work to sh to do with substitute teachers because that's my primary role mm -hmm. right now. Um, I I'm trying so to. I've, do I've I've just made you a co-host, so okay. you can now present it. Okay, I do open system preferences. Uh, no, you should be able to just go down to the bottom. It should say an option. You, you should be able to just. I guess Alt S or or click on share screen. Um, it and says saying some weird stuff. Let me see. I'll X out of that and try it again. Hmm. I can find it in the spreadsheet and I can Okay. Uh, I can put again, I can I can present it and you can just tell me when to when to move on to the next slide. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here it is. Okay. Um, so my idea was that I wanted to teach middle school because I see so much conflict happening between students and middle school. Um, and sometimes, it, I, you know, I'm still trying to figure out if it's conflict between them or conflict between the, like, or I'm just interpreting it as conflict and it's not necessarily conflict, but I imagine that they're having this conflict. So I made this presentation based on that fact. So um, mm -hmm. here you can go to the next slide, please. Um, and, and by the way, for those who um, don't know, NVC stands for nonviolent communications. It, right. I, yeah, I, yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, and so I, I made this presentation, but, um, and these, the, okay, this still works, but I think some of my slides should be a whole nother lesson plan in and of themselves. But uh, I thought that students could start out by uh, uh, naming a conflict that they've had in school, saying uh, what happened, where, when, with whom, um, obviously no names and write that down. Um, next slide, please. Um, and, and then here's where I kind of like deviated and I, and I, I would almost need to like run this by a team or something because I, I felt like the kids needed all the backstory with the mirror neurons and the limbic and the sage and the mindfulness mm -hmm. to even be able to use nonviolent communication. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I almost see, like, I almost feel like I did like a parallel second step, like the, the character education, uh, that we do in advisory on Thursdays, uh, was, is sort of like last week, what did we do? Oh, we talked about, uh, you stress and distress last week in advisory, which was super fun for me. Cause I was mm. like, Oh, I actually know what you guys are doing as a mm. substitute. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, so, um, and this I think needs more work. So, um, next slide, please. Um, and so, uh, I found, um, a video about the lizard brain. Um, again, all this stuff, it, it's sort of at the end where I come back around to the NVC. So I'm almost thinking I could have just like, killed a bunch of these slides and just gone with the three on NVC. I, I'm still kind of working out my organization here, but I just want them to know all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll, you know, just to let you know, I, I have a friend who coaches principals um, and assistant principals in New York city. And I was talking to her this morning about middle school. And so I showed her your lesson and she said, this is so perfect for middle school. Oh, awesome. Okay. So you, so you really don't have to change anything. Okay. <laughs> okay? She was like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect for middle school kids. They'd be able to explain these concepts and this explains it in a way that they'll understand. Well, and the coolest thing is that I had a student today where I showed him my slides because somehow it came up. Um, I can't remember how it came up, but some kids said that he had stayed back a grade and all this stuff. And he's at all this uh, sort of um, failings in middle school. And he said that the one thing that he's done that's helped him the most is mindful breathing. Mm. He really was like, I, you know, it sounded like he was going to be dropped, you know, kicked out of school until he learned how to do breathing. So huh? um, thanks for saying that. Um, I don't know if we have time to play the video, but you guys can go back in um, later and check it out if you want to. Um, so yeah, so there's, we're getting out of limbic. Um, okay, next slide. This is my favorite slide. Um, I really was seeing like the Pink Floyd prism at yeah. the, the light <laughs> coming in. And then, and I think that you could put um, each of the sage, uh, sage powers into the colors, but that I, I didn't get that far with it. Um, or my tech skills aren't that savvy. I started to try to figure it out, but um, I just kept going. So yeah, no, that's great. And and I'm looking. There's six colors, right? And um, there's the five sage powers plus the sage perspective. So the number happens to fit really well. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, next slide, please. Uh, so here I wanted them to and define each of these because as I look at them, I am trying to define them. So mm -hmm. I thought they could do some sort of small group thing. Again, I'm still sort of um, figuring out how I would do that. Um, next slide, please. Um, and then of course I wanted to talk about the interceptor and the um, self commander just because I, I see an art lesson here uh, at, with like superheroes. And I've talked about that before, but that may be, so maybe I would like create another thing in here for that. That's good for, I'm a verbal processor. So this is good for me to talk it through. Um, next slide, please. And then here we come back to nonviolent communication. And um, the reason why I thought it would be cool to show substitute teachers is because um, I am, I'm using this with the kids. Um, I, I'm doing this all the time. I see, I feel I need my request. Uh, and it's, it's working really well 
Um, and it slows me down and gets me to be non-confrontational when I approach them, which they really like their defenses come up when they see you coming at them yeah. angry. And what this slows me down and, and it is really helpful. Um, and what, if I'm, trying to get someone to stop doing something mm -hmm. like disrupting the classroom. Uh, okay. Can you just for people who haven't been through the third course, just do you think you could give an example of, I see, I feel a need in my request. Oh, oh yeah. Um, okay. Like, uh, uh, okay, someone's on their phone and being disruptive and not doing their work. You know, uh, it's it's a it's a hot mess of disruption, and it's all starts with the phone. So uh, I I see that you're on. Oh no 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 no! Today I had a really good one. They were all not in their uh, assigned seats. Everybody was in there, not assigned seats. And so I I, I see you're all not in your assigned seats. Um, I feel disrespected by this because I know that you wouldn't do that for your homeroom teacher. Uh, I need to have a positive learning environment that is not disruptive, something like that. Um, my request is that everybody goes back to their assigned seats. Something. Yep, yep. Um, I've got a little use stress going on Perfect. here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that was great. That's a great okay. example. Okay, thank you. Um, and then uh, I I had to talk about saboteurs as well. Uh, and I think this could probably go on into another lesson now that I'm talking about it. But um, I found the um, a TED Talk video by the by um, yeah. If you click on it, mm -hmm. um, um, oh, the saboteur the. Down. Right. No, you're. You've re you've referenced him before. So I'm not going to play the whole video because it's it's 20 minutes. But right. Um. But anyhow, that's the video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. And and it, he's. I start. I watched part of it. Um. So he's super great. Uh. And would be really uh cool for I maybe even the high school mm -hmm. maybe the older kids. So. Yeah, I could see, you know, um, kind of a PD for uh, substitute teachers coming into a school, you know, getting them used to presenting things in a different way and going through these slides with them and say an hour or two to get them, you know, to, to feed them techniques, give them a chance to practice so that when they go in front of the kids, they're it's less intimidating. I mean, I, you know, as much as I want to use NVC, I, you know, I did have a kid come into the classroom all crazy today and I just, I immediately just like cut him off and sent him back out and was loud and aggressive. And the other kids were like so stoked and had never heard me do that before. And so I don't know what that's called compared to nonviolent communication, but I do think that's necessary too. So that I'd have to figure that out for uh, teaching subs about this, but. Yeah, right. There's, there's times that you have to be assertive. Yeah. And you just, you know, like there's, you know, there's, um, because it's not just, if you were just one-on-one -on -one with one person using mm -hmm. nonviolent communications, um, you know, is really helpful for that one person. But okay. you also have to deal with 28 other kids. And so sometimes you have to be really assertive with the one person in okay. order to set the environment, right, for the other 28 kids. So that's interesting. I wonder if NVC works more, works better if I'm just one on one versus a whole class. I might play around with that. The, the rest. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, yeah. She was very impressed. And, um, oh. Uh, so I just, you know, thought I'd give you that feedback also. I, I, I'm so happy to be aware of this stuff It like, I, I talked to my principal and he said that it took about, takes like six weeks for a strategy to actually like implement. I was talking about, about the, right. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so 
because we've got some pretty we've got some kids who just you know it's taken a while to get them on board so thank you yeah no thanks this really incorporates a lot of different things actually from both the 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 third course which you took in in january or january and february and 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 this the second course so yeah sure. great work thank you okay um all right so we certainly have time for one more uh one more person to present uh somebody's got to be dying to present right um this is christy i'll do it okay great and are you oh you do have co-host do you want to present sure okay let me start the video here and then i'll go to share screen and let me go up here and hopefully can you see my slide not yet okay let me see let me try one more thing here. I've got share screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. So it's that one. Share. Okay. Uh, it's just coming up now and oh come on. <laughs> okay. Got it. Okay. Can you see it now? Okay. Yep. Okay. So this is for middle school students, about eighth grade. I'm sure it would work for sixth or seventh graders as well. And it's just to teach them how to use the five stage powers in real life situations. So I wanted to do role plays with them to kind of have them think through how can I rethink how I handle situations and how I perceive others and how I do my mindset on how I, you know, adapt or, or um, react. So empathize, I would just give them the definition of the empathize, visualize a person as someone, um, and then I would ask them to really think about um, this scenario with that empathize in, in mind. Your friend comes to school every Monday and is um, upset how the weekend went because their family is always fighting. How would you empathize with this person based off you know, the definition of what empathize is? And then they explore, be curious about what has happened, what will happen without being attached to any results. And then I'd ask them, how could you explore our ideas from past experience to encourage and help this person without recognition? Your friend is having a hard time running the mile in PE because they're out of shape. You were out of shape last year and have experience getting ready to run the mile. How are you going to explore your ideas of past experience and share that with that person? And I tried to think of situations that I've heard in the classroom and tried to attribute to um, all of these experiences for the students so they could really think, gosh, I could really use this. I don't want them just to look at it and think, oh my gosh, Mr. Shoemaker's up in the night. She's showing us things that are useless. And so when, uh, when the obvious and to innovate, um, when the obvious or traditional ways aren't working, encouraging and building on others ideas to create something new. And then I would ask them about this. You have been asked to work in a group on a big project in class. You usually get um, to pick the people you work with, but your teacher chose the groups. And that's what I do very often in my class. Um, you struggle working with others and would rather do the work on your own. In this class, you don't have many friends, and at times you can be abrupt with others when you don't feel comfortable. So we would talk about that. How do you innovate in that group setting? And then navigate. Give them the definition of navigate. And then the situation. How can you navigate the situation and know that you're satisfied with the outcome? You're not invited to do activities with others very often. And this happens a lot in, in, a, in middle school, and I'm sure – um, elementary as well, but I wanted to use the situation because kids, I believe, at middle school are just finding their way. They're finding who they are, and this happens so much to them. Well, some of us are still doing and that so, as adults, uh, just finding yes, our way. Yes, yes, <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> so you've been invited by a group of people who you have you have wanted to be friends with for quite some time to hang out after school at the park. You overheard them talking about vaping while they were there. And we have a lot of, well, not a lot, but some instances in our middle school with the vaping. I thought this would be a great way to pre-think, how are you going to handle that situation when it comes up? How are you going to navigate that challenge? Because that's a real life thing. And then the activate, being prepared to be in the flow, especially when obstacles appear. 
And so I gave him this situation. You just made the basketball team and your goal this year is to try and get a sports scholarship for college. On the first day of practice, he knows that your team is not very good and you worry you will not be noticed by college scouts, especially if your team doesn't make it to the final playoffs. And so we have lots of coaches come down to the junior high and look at, you know, our students for um, like summer summer leagues and things like that. And so this would definitely play in in key with with them. And so, and I don't know if that's gonna keep on going here. Let me see. For some reason, it won't advance. I think that was, might have been my last page. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. I think that's my last page. Yep. Yeah, I so love that's you. it. My I, I idea love your was examples. to role play. You yeah, know? I love your Thank examples because you. they're taking right out of what kids experience. And uh, you know, as I kind of joked a little bit about some of us as adults are experiencing similar things um and yes. <laughs> it's so cool because, i mean one of the things is that you know they're learning about these five powers but the discussions are calling on them to use the five powers during the discussions so it's like you know um feeding into itself because they're learning they're they're, they're talking about this power and they're using it while they're having the discussion so it's um uh it it's like doubly reinforcing and ha and having them create and imagine the re really real situations that's a um i think that could be used in middle schools i mean really all over the country you should speak at conferences with that presentation oh. yeah so. thank you that it, it was a fun one to make i really like doing those kind of things role playing with my kids because i think it gets them really thinking how could i actually use it mm-hmm yeah, and there's um yeah, a couple of people also, you know, amplified great examples, real life challenges that kids face. And um uh you know, Denise was applauding also. So yeah. Great work. And thank you for being willing to to present. So um so we're now um I guess eight or my time eight twenty three, your time, you know, five twenty three. So um does anybody want to want to do a, a last presentation? Then, um, then if nobody wants to do a last presentation, I just want to say that I have really, really enjoyed um, interacting with you all. Um, you know, going seeing your responses on the um, on, on the surveys, uh, talking during class, hearing your examples. And um, you know, thank you for thank you so much for coming. For those who have not gotten lesson plans, um, uh, we will hold everything for the next certainly next week, probably the next two weeks, um, and also give you a chance if you if you miss a session to just let me let us know that you that you have the session, and then Tammy's going to submit the um, uh, you know the 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 number of credit hours that everybody everybody should get. And um, this this is uh, mind shifting one. I think mind shift. She's got a mind shifting two class that starts March twenty sixth. Um, so people who are interested in that, feel free to sign up for that also. And um, I'm going to turn off the recording.